In this lesson today, we're going to talk about independent probability, which is something we like to call with replacement. So we're going to be doing some probabilities where we're going to be taking out an object and then replacing it back into um, the group. So before we get into the depths, let's just go ahead and talk about some basics here. Independent probability is the probability that when one event occurs, in no way does it affect the probability of the other event occurring. So let's go ahead and look at this situation here. We have a spinner with four equal sections of different colors, and then we have a fair dice. So we want to know what are the chances, what is the probability of the event of us spinning a blue? Well, we've reviewed this before, and we know that the chances are going to be one out of four chances. Okay, well now let's figure out the other one the probability of rolling the dice and rolling a four. We know that that is going to be a one out of six chances, or one out of six times that should actually happen. Now here's where the independent probability comes in. Because those two that we just did were more theoretical probability. Now what we want to do is figure out, well, what are the chances that I spin the spinner and roll the die, and I spin a blue and I roll a four? What are the chances of that particular thing actually happening? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two fractions above, and I'm going to multiply them together. Again, just a little review on multiplying fractions. When you multiply fractions, you're going to multiply the numerators by each other. One times one will give me one. And then I'm going to multiply the denominators together. Four times six gives me 24. This fraction is already simplified, so it is fully complete. So if I ask myself, well, what are the chances of this actually happening? Um, it's going to give us about a 4% chance. That would be the equivalent um, percentage. So about 4% of the time it would actually happen, or 1 out of 24 times um, it, this could actually happen. So it's not very likely. Okay, let's try another one. This time I have a fair coin with a head side and a tail side, and then I have a spinner with six equal sections with different colors. So let's figure out some theoretical probability first. What are the chances that we land on a heads? Well, we studied this during experimental probability, and we know that it's going to be one out of two chances, or about 50% of the time. How about a red? The probability of spinning a red would be two out of six times, which, of course, we can simplify down to one-third. So I want to know <clears throat> my independent probability of um, flipping the coin and getting a heads and spinning the spinner and getting a red. So if I did both of those at the same time, what are the chances that I would actually land on a heads and land on a, a red? So I'm going to take my probabilities from above, and I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to take one half times my simplified fraction of one third, and I'm going to simplify it. One out of six. So the chances of that actually happening are one out of six times, which we know the decimal um, or percentage equivalent would be about 16%. So not very likely. It could happen, but it's not that likely. Okay, let's do one more. All right, this time we have a spinner with six equal sections with different colors. We have a uh, fair number cube or a dice with six sides, and we have a coin with two sides. So the probability of us spinning a green, it looks like, would be one out of six times. All right, the probability of us rolling the die and landing on an even number, remember, there is an equal amount of even numbers and odd numbers on a die. So that would give us about one half the time. And a tails, landing on a tails would be one half. So what we want to do is we want to determine our independent probability. So we want to say, well, what are the chances that we spin the spinner and get a green, we roll the die and get an even number, and we flip the coin and we get a tails. So let's go ahead and take those fractions and let's multiply them together. So one-sixth times one-half times one-half. And again, I'm going to multiply my numerator. So one times one times one will give me one. And then six times two equals 12. And 12 times 2 equals 24. And that is going to be my independent probability. Those are the chances of this actually happening. Um, just like the one uh, above, this is a coincidence that it is about the same, 4%. But um, not a very likely chance of that actually happening. 
Okay, so that is independent probability. Now we're going to focus on these words with replacement. And we're still going to be working with independent probability. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. It says, there are eight candy bars in a box. We have three Twix, four Reese's, and one Milky Way. What is the probability that you'll randomly select a Reese's, decide you don't want it anymore, put it back in the box, and then randomly select a Twix? So stop and think about what that's actually talking about. So we reach our hand into a bag that we can't see the candy bars within it. And let's say that we pull out a Reese's. What are the chances that we pull out a Reese's? We decide that we don't really want the Reese's, so we put it back in the container, and then we randomly pull out a Twix. We want to know what are the chances of that situation actually happening. So here's how we do this. Let's start with the Reese's. What are the chances that we randomly select a Reese's? Just looking at our candy bars here, um, it, we have eight total candy bars. You can see that also we have four Reese's bars out of the eight. So my first probability is going to be four out of eight. Those are my chance, that's my chances of actually pulling out a Reese's first. Now, I want to simplify this, but let's just hold off for a second. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take that Reese's and I'm going to put it back in the bag. Now I'm going to reach my hand in and this time I'm going to pull out a Twix. What are the chances of that happening? Well, since I put the candy bar back in the bag, I still have eight candy bars to choose from. So my denominator will be eight. But this time I'm choosing a Twix. And you can see by our picture here that we have three Twix to choose from. So I'm going to say three out of eight times. All right. This is going to be my probability, because I'm going to take these two fractions that I've created, and I'm going to multiply them. Now, you can multiply these straight across, and you could say 4 times 3, and you could take 8 times 8. That's fine, but I'm going to show you a really cool technique on how to simplify fractions. All right, so let's just look at the first fraction here, 4 eighths. Can I simplify 4 eighths to 1 half? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do that by doing this. I'm just going to cross off the 4, and I'm going to write a little 1 right here. And then I'm going to cross off my 8, and I'm going to write a little 2 right here. Now that I've simplified that fraction, I'm going to now multiply my new numerator by 3. So 1 times 3 will give me 3, and 2 times 8 will give me 16. By simplifying the problem itself, I don't have to simplify at the end, which is really nice. Trust me, you're going to like this little rule. So the likelihood of that situation actually happening is 3 out of 16 times, which is about 18% of the time that would actually happen. So it's not very likely, but it definitely could happen. All right, let's try another example with replacement. So same situation, we have eight candy bars in the box, and we want to know what is the probability that you randomly select a Twix, decide you don't want it anymore, put it back in the box, and then decide to reach back in and you pull out a Milky Way. Let's go figure out the probability of that actually occurring. So the probability of first randomly selecting a Twix would be three out of eight times, because there are three Twix in the box. Then we want to multiply this by the chances of putting that Twix back into the bag and now selecting a Milky Way. Well, since the Twix is back in the bag, our denominator is still eight candy bars. But this time, there's only one Milky Way in the bag. Okay? At this point, you can see that my fractions do not, are not able to be simplified. So I'm going to multiply straight across. I'm going to say three times one is three, and eight times eight is 64. And 3 out of 64 does not simplify. So that is going to be the probability of that situation happening. You can see that that situation is a little bit lower, probably because there are less Milky Ways in, um, in the bag than there were Twixes, like the last problem. This gives us about a 4% chance of this actually happening. Okay, so that is independent probability. Um, next thing we're going to do in the next lesson is going to be dependent probability. So um, I hope you have a really good grip of this independent probability before we move on.